For those of you watching on YouTube who had no idea that this event was going to happen, I'm sorry. <laughs> but uh, here you are, and here's everyone uh, on Tumblr or YouTube right now who's watching this. Uh, here's this event. It was really fun. And we are now recording what we are going to do, basically is we are going to randomly generate a bunch of maps with Hexographer until we get one that has some decent forestry and mountains. Can I zoom out a bit? Oh. Well, this map has like a bunch of mountains right there and then none anywhere else. So let's try that again. Hmm... That's interesting. Let me let me just take a capture of this and see what you guys think. What do you guys think of this? Well, that's very colorful. We've got a mountain range in the setting. Not enough water, they say. It depends on if you expand it out and if it. The, uh, more water? Uh, yeah, like there's more to this map. This is this is a fo- oh, that's zooming in. I wanted to zoom out. Here, here's the full map I will take a capture of. And then right around the center is what that picture was from. So we've got some like inlet seas to the north that might lead out to the ocean. Got enough mountains that we can get, like, rivers and lakes. I feel like this generated a lot of desert. Well, I'm just looking at the basic shape right now. It looks workable to me. Yeah. And, like, we have the option to change certain things, but I don't want, like, a map that we would have to totally alter the layout of to get it to what we wanted it to be. I do like the sort of spine of scattered mountains going from across the center. I like the fact that it seems like there's three central areas. You got the top right, the middle, and the top left. True. Even though there's the small straits of land that you can say connect the middle and the top left, I just like how there's three distinct areas. Like, you could almost say three civilizations even. Possibly. What do you, what what do the other listeners think? Mom, mom. Um, Aether likes it. Hilly's been typing. You could probably do something neat with that circle of area. Who dares text me in the middle of this event? All right, Bailey's just gotten home. She'll join in a few minutes. Is that sand? I mean, that's not desert. What is that area? What? The texture in between the forests and the plains. In the, in the top left? Yeah. Those are hills. Oh, those are hills. So it's like a hill. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we have this massive map here. Each one of these tiles is going to be about uh, 24 miles across, just because that makes it really easy to calculate like the, the number of days it would take to get to a different location. So, what should we start out with? Like, alright, so we have these random pockets of uh, mountains. We have a random pocket of mountains up in the north uh, east, random pocket mo of mountains by the lake to the in the center, and then the spine sort of. I don't. Every, it always ends up being a spine, so I don't know if we want to call it a spine. Because well, every time... What kind of world are we making? The not spine. The... Oh, exactly. <laughs> we'll make it... We'll make it totally devoid of bears and we'll be the Antarctic wall of not bears. And not it's spine. Not, it's not the spine. It's actually the femur mountains. The femur? <laughs> We're actually just like... It's a big world. This is like the middle finger bone. <laughs> <I just> <laughs> <laughs> oh 
Thank you, Terra Chief, for that graphic. So, what do we start with? Do we start with setting down a civilization? Do we set start with like naming a mountain, M naming this mount this mountain range, naming the oceans? What's in the oceans? I, I like Ellie's idea, which is the not mountain spine. If you don't look at them, they don't exist. But I also <laughs> mountains don't exist. Show me a mountain. Everyone has a different name. Everybody has a different name for the mountains. I was just reading a post the other day that was like, when people come to different societies and they ask, uh, like, the, the British people ask the Celts, What's, what do you call this river? And they say, Avon. And they're like, all right, this river is named Avon. And the Celts are like, no, Avon is our word for river. What are you, what are you doing? It doesn't have a name, it's water. It would be very easy to do that, uh, Aether, if there's a civilization above and below this... Above and below the mountain range, fighting over all the passes. I like that concept. One of them just calls them... Oh, I don't want to do that. One of them just calls them mountains. The other decided to have a name for it. <laughs> the Land River. <laughs> Uh, who just joined us? Oh, it's Bailey. Bailey, who tried to get her mic to work before and now doesn't. Oh, so when I leave, it's all just you. Uh, big yeah. point, big point boys. Big point boys. The Land River. Sound. It kind of sounds poetic, though. Like if we came up with a dwarvish word that meant Land River. Awesome. Thank all you. right. So I like the idea. We have. Um, the mountains in big capital letters for no reasons. Uh, one group just calls them mountains. Uh, I like the idea of someone calling it a land river, but like in their own language. So what would be like? What language should we be using? Maybe goblin the or very orc large or dwarvish. Hills. The very the very large hills. The hill dwarves call them very large hills, and the and the mountain dwarves call them mountains, and that's what caused the war. Dwarves don't believe in them. <laughs> the inverted tunnels, maybe with dwarven or orcish. How about halfling? The halfling mountains. The, these mountains are just overrun with halflings. It's where it's where all the halflings way. run, because halflings. Uh, it, it says in the player's handbook that halflings, you know. Uh, survive by basically staying out of people's w ways, so they just all fled to the big hills and and just stayed out of people's way all the time. Got eaten by a lot of rocks, but you know, that's besides the point. Jonah, to be fair, if, if you're having two civilizations fighting over the mountains, I wouldn't call, exactly call halflings out of the way by being there. Well, the two... <laughs> they were out of the way until that fight started, and then the halflings got caught in the middle, and the players have to go save them, obviously. We're out of, of the way. The Fire Nation attacked. <laughs> the Halfling Nation attacked. I do think that uh, Goblin Orcish or Dwarvish would be a good language to base this in. So, what, what would the word be for Land River? Because I do like that idea. Qualith? Isn't Orcish based off the Dwarven language? Well, Orcish uses the Dwarven alphabet. We use the Arabic alphabet. Our language isn't based on Arabic. That's more of what I meant. Yeah. It repeats a lot of syllables. Also, sorry for too much... Aether, yes, this is A thing, not B thing. Has apostrophes so, uh, in the titles. Borara or Doruru. Doruru sounds like river. I like Doruru. Doruru might mean land river. Uh, orcs, orcs call them uh, Doruru. All right, so we've we've got mountains. We've got uh, land river. Who would you? We've got halflings living in the mountains, maybe. So I'll make you shiver. 
I swear I'm taking this seriously, by the way. A weird, uh, halfling barbarian society that's separate from, like, the settled-down halflings that live in most civilizations. They're the ones that ran away and had to survive in the wilds. Somehow doing better for themselves there. And that's how forest gnomes were born. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Aether. Aether's keeping us entertained. Alright, so we've got Doruru Mountains marked on this map now. Why it takes forever to work with Hexographer to get it to say that, I won't know. We have this mountain range, and we know that it, it's named in Orcish, so the orcs have to be somewhere around here. So where do we put the orcs? So, the orcs have to be somewhere around these mountains. Where do we put orcs? You could put them in the, uh, to the southwest, kind of in that foresty hilly area. The foresty hilly area. Right above the water? Right above the water. What are the rest, what do the rest of the people think? could call that air, that water area uh, Stone Tusk Bay. Ah! I'm gonna drop my bottle. Referred to by the orcs as the Bone Zone. Alright. I can survive this. Maybe there's rocks that look like tusks? Maybe they are tusks, and people think they're rocks that look like tusks. But Stone Tusk Bay, home of the orcs, what do the orcs want? What do the orcs do? I mean, obviously they've got their whole, whole groomsh thing going. Don't bring me down, groomsh. They've got this whole, like, water, like, waterborne orcs? Orc pirates? Orcborn. Orcborn? What? That's that's orcs. Orc Vikings. Hey, Vikings. Orc Vikings. <laughs> kind of raiding along the. Uh, oh, I'm sorry if that clap was louder than I wanted. Uh, all right. Home of the orcs. The orc Vikings. What do we call them? Are they just the stone tusks, and they name the bay after themselves, or the? Uh, or name themselves after the bay that they found tusk rocks at? Which came first, orcs or pointy rocks? Orcs with pointy rocks. I like the idea of, like, the pointy rocks having been there forever, and whether or not they're, like, fossils of some great beast, or that's just what the orcs think, maybe the orcs worship these rocks or hold them to be sacred. That sounds cool. Ronk? I don't understand you anymore, Aether. They're being You've easier. changed! Pointy tusk rocks. Maybe you orcs hold the tusk rocks to be sacred? Question mark? And for some reason, the orcs care about the mountains and what the mountains are called. So maybe... Those are giant tusks. This rock with an N, yes. <laughs> the orcs want the mountains because of more pointy rocks. Because obviously, these tusks are the tusks of a much bigger creature. The spine, I'm going back to spine, of which is these mountains. <laughs> I told myself I didn't want spines. You can't stay away from spines. Mountains have to be spines. Unless you're in Skyrim, in which case they're a throat, because, I don't know. They were chased out of the mountains by the halflings. I kind of like that, actually. The, the, the halfling chasing the orcs out of the mountains, not the, not, not the big pointy being afraid of heights. Ah. Orcs were, were chased out of the mountains by halflings who were chased out of their homes. Who chased the thing that chased the halflings away? That's the real question. <laughs> Orcs were chased out of the mountains by halflings. 
They want their their original land back. When we started with the halfling idea, I was like, I'm pretty sure that these these halflings are just gonna get caught in the middle of the conflict. And now they're the instigators. They're like the Americans now. Instigators are like people who went to school in the Gainesville area and were forced to go to UF because of their zoning. They were instigators. Don't I hate you? <laughs> so much! What happened? Uh, suddenly mountain ha halflings ambush halflings. They go around stealing everyone's stuff. Maybe halflings have a rep for acting innocent all the time. Halflings, innocent, acting. These highway robbery barbaric halflings who pretend to be the normal civilized halflings and then they rob you. They weren't actually halflings, but what? Kinders? What's a kinder? Like a kinder egg? Are kinders like evil halflings? Is that the Duergar of halflings? Halflings with double doses of ADHD and kleptomania thrown in. Ooh. No one apparently saw how terrible a decision that was. They survived getting the shit kicked They <laughs> wear the cloth shit. armor. Everyone in the little shit seemed to be wearing plot armor, which they undoubtedly <laughs> stole from more interesting species, now tragically extinct. <laughs> I, sh I should have realized what this article was going to be when I opened 1D4chan. We get a little, um... What, uh, uh, Darwinism, uh, evolution as halflings break off and one stays the normal halfling and the other becomes Kender? We have orcs and we have halflings. We still have yet to say that humans even exist. Uh, above these mountains, we have a lot of, uh, th thick mountain forest and then light mountain forest before we get up to, like, desert all of the sudden. I guess the rivers don't run north too far. Maybe they run over into that lake beside the other mountains. I'm pretty sure none of the humans were happy with Waterworld. I didn't see Waterworld, but I'm pretty sure that like having to dig up dirt from the bottom of the ocean wasn't a great... No one saw Waterworld. Fair point, Terra Teeth. Atlantis? But then you just have Tritons. Then you just have humans evolving and becoming Tritons. It could be like Earth 2 and Atlantis has risen. And I don't like Tritons. I like the concept of Tritons, but every time I look at their stat block and I'm like, they get plus one to three abilities, what am I going to do with that? And that's all they get, really. Atlantis, Rapture, the humans have fulfilled their religious requirements for Rapture, they don't exist anymore. There's an interesting idea, humans just don't exist. The only ones exist. That, exi that still exist are neutral or evil. All right. The good, so the good ones are. Here's here's a thought. Just thinking about that, there's all these like lore worlds where there is some advanced race that has vanished. In Skyrim, you've got the dwarves. They leave behind their automatons, and they're just extinct. Uh, you get you have races all over the place. The ancient ones who who did whatever things. Uh, aliens sometimes. What if in this world, humans have just vanished, gone extinct, or left this plane, or something? I do kind of like the idea of just no good humans exist. Like, they're all just naturally evil or, uh, or neutral. Well, that's already the case. <laughs> I'm not necessarily saying modern setting, I'm just saying that maybe the humans had some other, like, like magical technology, maybe they got as far as steam power and then vanished and everybody else keeps finding, you know, so the apparatus of Qualish or whatever. So humans are basically the, uh, the dwarves of this, the dwarves of Skyrim. Yeah, and it will make Eren happy that she doesn't have to play in a world where humans are an option to play as. <laughs> I, I like Teratith's idea, but kind of a little bit differently. Like, there are major ruins all over the air all over the place of uh old human civilizations and uh secreted within are portals to the different kind of planes mm -hmm. so we could so maybe the humans that existed in this world left to go 
inhabit somewhere a, a different plane of existence. Yeah. yeah. Humans, Humans just, just fucked, fucked off. off. Humans have fucked the fuck off this fucking fuck up world. <laughs> we just make a bunch of custom races of it. Mind flayers? You're just shouting mind flayers, is Teratif. What do, what do you mean? What are you doing? Oh, I see now. I understand. <laughs> you said it a third time in bold, and now I get your meaning. All right, so where are we going to put some of these things? What's uh what's in this this heavily f forested mountain region right above the uh mountain range in the center block of land? I need styled lines. Freehand river? Freehand river, maybe? There we go. We get a freehand river going down. I thought you were saying three-hand river. I'm like, no. What kind of river is that? I don't see that on the map. We'll, uh... Rivers flow down from mountains, as we all know. Terry Chief is saying that elves are the new humans. What if what goblins awesome. are the new humans? I think if- I honestly think that if anything was going to take the place of humans, it would end up being hobgoblins. Honestly, you're probably right. Is this, uh, yeah, this is 5e. Some non-base player's handbook races as major races. Alright, I have- I actually have like, six books over here. So let's open up Volo's Guide to Monsters. We've got the Wait, Hobgoblins and the Goblins. We have Kobolds. What are Kobolds doing? I haven't done much with Kobolds in a while. How about Bugbears? <laughs> Bugbears? Yuan T? Oh, did I send... I send yeah, uh, I sent an image. Cool. Huh? Yuan T sound cool. We could have them be a, a dominant uh, race somewhere. Hmm. Maybe these halflings, alright, you know the halflings in the mountains that became, uh, what, kinder, kinder eggs? Um, they fled from, like, human civilizations that were overrun when the humans disappeared uh, doing whatever disappearing things they did. And something came in to replace the humans, one of the monstrous races, probably, or just monsters in general. So whatever whatever that monster was is now in this hilly, rivery region that I just put up there. What if there's a uh, kind of a semi-alliance kind of thing between uh, Yuan-Ti, Lizardfolk, and um, uh, and uh, racing Medusa. Kind of just keeping with that scaly reptile vibe. Um, and they all kind of exist in one general, uh, general society. I don't... I, I like the furries and... Terra Teeth, you're banned. No. <laughs> um... Furries everywhere! <laughs> uh, I like the Yuanti and lizard folk. I think Medusa is just a hard a hard race to coexist with. Cause like if you look at them, it's uh it's not like they can just not turn you to stone. I don't know, Yuanti would probably enslave the other races either way. But I do, I do think we're gonna put Yuanti in here. Perhaps they've enslaved lizard folks and troglodytes. And some Halflings, right? Lizardfolk, troglodytes, and the uh, Kinder? No, the Kinder are up in the mountains. They've enslaved the halflings that stayed behind. Kinder enslaved the halflings. Halflings were enslaved by Yon T. The Kinder are escaped. They're in the mountains. Yon T enslaved halflings. Okay. Alright. So any player character who is a halfling from this region is an escaped slave. Probably. Put a Yuan-Ti kingdom right there. 
What about races like Azimar, Tieflings, Ganassi, Half-Elves? Traditionally, they're part human somewhere. So maybe you could do something with that. I could, I could see a race of, um, a, a group of half-elves kind of becoming like humans, but they're never going to be exactly like humans, because they're always going to be half-elves. So maybe half-elves and those other half-humans are the last vestiges of the human society, but they are mm. a slowly dying race. I think... If this, if this is far enough that humans are sort of like a distant memory, they might have a different name for the half-races. Like, half-elves aren't half-elves anymore. They're, they're some other breed of weaker elf. Uh, wasn't there something like that in, the, in a couple of the older editions? Um, or, or at least a name we could use? I think they've always been called half elves. Well, um, well, here's the thing about uh, Asmar, Tieflings, and uh, Ganazi. Those are all just cool names that we could just keep, and the relation to them being human is long forgotten. Like yeah. maybe, yeah. They, maybe it's just assumed that they're just mortal celestials or fiends or uh, or, or genies. That's just part of who they are in this world. I'm not sure what I what I would want to do about Azamar, but Tieflings, Ganassi, and Half Elves and Half Orcs. The Half Elves and Half Orcs we could rename something without having to call them half something. And then the Tieflings and Ganassi could just have their own societies of Tieflings and Ganassi. Why don't we just call them uh, Bastard Elves and Bastard Orcs? Well, because that still implies their half nature. They, I'm, they, I'm more implying that they are of that their elven or orcish nature is "quote unquote" tainted. Hmm. How about Keebler for the elves? <laughs> we want we want just like a name that doesn't. Speci like lesser elves, maybe. Something that implies that they're not as elf as other elves, but doesn't imply that they're something else. We could borrow the um, uh, the name of the rangers from um, Lord of the Rings. What was what were they? Uh, not not the rangers. The um the the, the human society that was the Dunedain. Uh, the Duodine, yeah. Because they were basically half-elves. Now how do we bastardize the term Dunedain? For now, we can we can just write, um, uh, Azimar, Tieflings, Ganassi, and other half-races no longer have any stigma of being half-blooded, but are instead considered to be a full race of their own. Or, I guess, Viking society in this setting that are just straight-off orcs. And then there are the Warhammer orcs, which are just mindless killing machines. And, yes, Hilly, I am I am kind of taking that from you, but I like it, so... <laughs> good, 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 good people steal, okay? Good people steal. Remember that, kids. If you want something, just remember, good people steal. You know, like a liar. If, what if we pull off the Matt Colville conflict and just have both Yuan T and we have uh, Thrykeen uh, in the desert areas? Yuan-Ti and Thrykeen in the in the desert areas? We, we have, or, no, we have, a uh, yuan -Ti up in this forested region to the north, and then the Thrykreen in the desert region, either to the east or west of that mountain patch, or down there by the other mountain patch. I kind of like to the, uh, uh, to the east of the mountains. So like the right below the mountains? 
Pardon? Right below the mountain range? Yeah, right below and kind of in that middle pass area. I could definitely see some Thriking living in there. In the pass or next to the other patch? Next to the other patch, but also like mainly in the pass because that's because people who are traveling through that area uh, would be good place. Do Thriking raid? I don't know much that that much about them. Yeah, they. I, I think they, they eat like people. Thrykreen consider all other living creatures as potential nourishment, and they love the taste of elf flesh in particular. So how about we put the Thrykeens in a desert close to elves? In a desert close to elves. So, so in the western region of the whole map, we've got some deserts that run right up next to some forested terrain. Is that... do you want that to be, uh, Thrykeen stuff? That could be our Thrykreen territory, yeah. Yeah. You, you wanna know what might be cool? Having the uh, the mountain areas uh, being named after the Thrykeen weapons. The the chach the chachkis. So we've got Thrykeen there, and we get elves up in the forests to the south or the or the north or both. I would say both. Wood elves and wild elves are also the, the same thing, basically. So what if they're not similar, yeah. wood elves in this setting, they're wild elves, because Player's Handbook says that wild elves are just another race using the same statistics. Um, Unless you follow a, a Unearth Arcana, where wild elves are now a thing. Alright. Let's just contradict ourselves, D&D. &D. That's what they're best at. Didn't you play 3rd edition at all? Yes. Uh, I'm thinking High Elves control this little meeting of peninsulas in the water. It's canon, it's cool canon, but I don't know if we want to keep that. The, the Typhling being, Typhling's, uh, made to outbreak humans. So they were made by devils? They're the children of Asmodeus, or Asmodeus, or however you want to pronounce that? And then we'll put the Sober Elves in the northern area. Welcome to Whose Campaign Is Anywhere, where the rules don't matter and we steal. I obviously wrote that and wasn't hilly at all. You realize that I'm recording this and everyone will know who we are talking about. You know what's going to be really awesome? Watching this later and seeing what the heck it is you're doing. Nah. You'll never know. We have a northwestern region. We have a northern island cluster, a northeastern continent. Have, don't we still have the northern part of the middle islands to take care of? Yeah. We've got Yuanti in that uh, rivery region. So this is the region that we need to work on. What's our primary, like, where are we starting? What, what race do we want to make the... Or collection of races do we want to make the the owners of the starting location i would say um dwarves dwarves and elves like we don't have any dwarves on this map yet we probably need some dwarves we should probably get some dwarves in there then yeah toss in some dwarves nobody tosses the dwarves either uh probably make, I, I like Kelly's idea where we have uh, a land where races get along. Are there any land areas where races get actually? No, Hilly. Humans were the reason that anyone liked each other. <laughs> Without humans to mediate, they just go to war all the time. Completely different than in my settings, where humans are the reason why no one gets along anymore. I do think dwarves and elves would probably step in when humans vanished and all the other monstrous races started to take in dwarves and elves would probably take up like the role of the new paladins who would come in and try to stop the world from falling into chaos what if we had a uh, uh <clears throat> the starting society be uh, a place where um uh, there are high elves that uh, are more the uh the religious and the fighters, and uh, the dwarves are more of the arcanists and esoterics. So we twist that up. So we completely invert that. 
We make, we make, what, what do you guys think? I don't want this to be, you know, Bailey and Jonah, people who know each other all the time anyway, just talking to each other. We gotta get some ideas from the people listening. I don't know, maybe there's some wastelands no one occupies? That could be the, uh, Thraki, the northern part of the, uh, middle area. The, the wastelands. This hilly plains area? Yeah, above the Yonti. Something lives everywhere, that's a thing. Like, you go to Antarctica, you're gonna find penguins, and then you get whole penguin societies. Let's make a let's make a race of penguin people. <laughs> the rest of that, that, that hilly sandy area up above the uh, Yuansian next to the Thraikine, is that now that's a ton of just grassland and hills, right? Yeah. We could have um. Why do I keep doing this in every single setting? Um. We could have that be the um the cloven wastelands and throw that to uh minotaurs and centaurs and those be the only things that like exist there. Well, the minotaurs are gonna eat all of them. Centaurs are fast. Centaurs are fast. <laughs> I think in that like society, like mini if minotaurs were gonna be hunting centaurs all the time, they would like learn to use bows. God, can you imagine them? Fighting a minotaur that can shoot we, a great We bow? swap it around. Minotaurs use bows, centaurs use axes. What do centaurs do with their <laughs> arms when they run? Well, if you watch Harry Potter, nothing good. Are we actually saying uh, these planes are minotaurs and centaurs that war with each other? I think that that might be a good, like, common enemy in that area. I like the idea of switching, like, their common weapons. The, the minotaurs are more experienced archers, because they have to hunt the centaurs more often, and the centaurs use uh, more melee or throwing weapons. Centaur ninjas. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys hear the sound of cloven feet on our roof? Since someone brought nah, a drow while I was driving, having them in forest isn't a bad idea. Have it contain the human ruins with a portal to the plane of shadows. I like that. We could have, like, a society of Drow and Shadar Kai, maybe? What? what? I, I like this idea because it gives us the opportunity to make Drow not Lolth children. And we instead make them elves from the Shadow Plane. I like it. Like, maybe there's a elf Shadar Kai alliance from the Shadow Plane? Do do do. We had. Where's there a dark yeah, enough forest to put this? I mean, we could have a, um... We could move the Yuan Ti... Nope, I just... <laughs> I, I like... I like the Shadow Kai being humans from the Shadow... From the Shadow Plane. I'm not a huge fan of connecting them to the Raven Queen always. Um, or even just having the Raven Queen in general. I love the idea, but I don't know if it's necessary. Maybe when we get to gods, we can talk about that. When we get to gods, we can talk about that. We can we can decide. Like, I've always been of the opinion that D and D is a multiverse, and all of these worlds exist all the time. So, like, you get um, a Greyhawk setting, and Greyhawk uses the Greyhawk gods, and then you get an Eberron setting, and Eberron uses the Eberron gods, and Forgotten Realms, and Dragonlands, and so on. But then you get the custom worlds. And the custom worlds are sort of where the Venn diagrams start to bleed over, and you get some some of the Eberron gods, some of the Forgotten Realms gods. Um, that's what my current 5th current... edition setting was like, where um, the, the Fearwold was a region that was more based around Greyhawk, or what's that, Greyhawk or Eberron gods? I don't know. And then Clear Run mostly used uh, Forgotten Realms gods, but they still knew about Paylor and such. Uh, Judah, I would like to mention that the uh, the halflings in the mountain are now kinder. They're like evil trickster halflings. So having the society be like the Romans doesn't doesn't really fit. I just want to put that out there for you, Cheetah Chaser. Yeah, we we kind of have them as barbarians slash highway robbery type of people right now. 
We could do the Yon T as more of a um as more of a, a Roman. Yeah, we could yeah. switch we could switch Yon T to a Roman system. How would Kinder chase out the orcs with weapons? With with swarms of of Kinder power. <laughs> You have to be really careful about the kindergartens, though. They, uh... No, they, they pulled out their their guerrilla warfare, their Ewok prowess cheetah chaser. <laughs> their kinders. <laughs> I love this kinder stuff. Uh, so I've moved the yuan a bit further east, so that... What were we putting? The drow. Okay. So, are, are, are we just sticking with the drow, or my idea of the drow and shatter kai kind of thing? Um, well, uh, the drow. I, I don't know what to do with the shatter kai, so we can figure out something with shatter kai. But, um, um. Well, how about we just add in the shatter kai if we feel like it's necessary? If not, drow will just do. Yeah. I like the idea, because the Shadow Plane is a very depressing place, but the Shadow Kai have their whole, like, lore thing behind them, so I don't know what to do about them. So their, their, their current setting is sort of tied to the Shadow Plane, but the Drow I can consider being elves from the Shadow Plane, who found this portal to this plane and went, yes, finally we can, like, live our lives. So the elves... So the drow are um, are living in more of a human ruins in the heavy heavily forested area. Yeah. Because human ruins have portals to other realms for some reason. Well, the portals to the shadow plane just show up in places that haven't t been touched by light in a long time. Okay, so theoretically, there could be a portal to the shadow realm. Uh, in the areas where I haven't cleaned my room yet. Draw our elves from the shadow plane. Interesting. Also, you could really easily close that kind of portal just by lighting a torch near it. Yeah, well, that's why the drow are very careful to uh, obviously keep away races that would bring torches into their world. Like humans. Oh, well, the humans don't exist, but yeah, the drow uh, don't like people coming in because anyone who doesn't see in the dark very easily isn't allowed to come anywhere near their shadow portal. Actually, why do they even want a shadow portal? You mean to go back to the shadow realm? or Yeah, because the whole point is that they've come here to escape from the shadow plane. So then, the... Uh... Maybe they're still coming through. They're, like they're still pouring more elves through. Are the elves enslaved by Shadar Kai? That could be a thing. Have the like, areas containing the portals take on traits of those planes? I, I do like that. Uh, you kind of get into, um... Once again, critical role stuff, but... Um... Uh, like, like the area with um, fires, either uh, like Cheetah Chaser says, a desert or volcanoes. Um, I do like the idea. Mm -hmm. Um, just kind of depends upon what plane you're talking about. Like, would the plane to would, would the portal to Arborea be um, uh, heavily forested, or what, what if it's in the middle of like? freaking sea or something. Yeah, I don't think- I don't actually think that's a new idea. I'm pretty sure that that's like the canon way that portals naturally occur, is that oh, they yeah. find- they find environments that are already in that situation, and then they just sort of, like, on deep underwater, there's so much water there that magically the situation would just immediately lead to the water plane. So we have Drow. I like the drow. I like the drow setting. I like the Yuan Ti setting. I like the Orc Vikings. Still don't know anything about what the Elves and the Thrykreen are really doing over there. What are What are we calling the fields that contain a bunch of Minotaurs and Centaurs? I thought we were calling them the Cloven Wastes or something like that. Nobody said any name. 
I said something like that. Well, again, I don't want it to be just our ideas. Fair enough. That's not the purpose of this. The, the running grounds. Ground. Better than Ram Ranch. The running grounds. Fair the enough. running grounds. It makes me think like the the Maze Runner. Like this is where people come to run while minotaurs shoot at them and centaurs chase them down. And if you get to some certain point, you you win a prize. I don't know. I didn't watch Maze Runner. Pretty sure that's how Maze Runner goes. Yeah, you you run away from the bunch of minotaurs and centaurs, and then you win a prize, like a shiny shiny medal. I feel like I've just talked myself into liking the running grounds, and I don't know if we're really going to use that idea. I like the running grounds, um, especially if mo like the entire theme of the running grounds is um. Uh, are, are things that are quicker than you. All the Kelpies fast things live here. All the I horse know. things live here. Kelpies <laughs> live in the rivers. Coterminous plane, which contains some of the portals which can't be accessed in the main one. That's another thing. Somewhere in the back of the player's handbook. I forget what it's called. I, I think I know what you're talking about. Because I was telling you about it when you were doing your planar travel game. Yeah. Uh, Sigil in the Outlands it is a plane between the Outer Planes, a plane of neutrality, but not the neutrality of nothingness. Instead, it in incorporates a little bit of everything. It's circular, it's got a bunch of uh, planes in a circle around it, and then like a city in the middle where they all meet. We can, we can make it a little bit different and call it Sigil. I'm going to ban you from this call. The Running Grounds. Minotaurs, centaurs, uh... Might, might as well put satyrs in a question mark. Satyrs, um... Kelpies... Kelpies are the, uh, Irish thing, right? They're the, they're the water horse thing that eats people. Oh, okay, yeah. Oh, um, what about a, um... Uh, what is it? Um, give me a second. No. Andulahans. How about a Chiron that uh, oversees the uh, the running grounds? A Chiron? Wasn't Chiron just the name of a centaur? You're thinking Charon. What's a Chiron? Or Charon. So what what are you talking about? Uh, Monster Manual, page 163, the Chiron. K -I oh, the Chiron! Okay. okay. Yeah, Chiron. Yeah, here it says they're Celestials. They're supposed to be dragons, China. Uh, uh, American interpretation of Chinese stuff. Yeah. They're supposed to be giraffes, also. What other uh, player races haven't we discussed yet? Um, humans are gone, so we're not talking. We still about haven't put much. dwarves in anywhere. All right. Uh, well, I thought we were doing a society of dwarves and elves, with their roles kind of reversed. Oh, I thought I thought you had just said like uh, reversing the roles. I didn't realize you were saying they live together. For this next half hour, let's see what we can get done. Time to focus. Yeah. yeah. Time, time, time to game play game our game music game. montage and, and fit this all in. We don't have a lot of swamp in here. Lizard folk don't necessarily, no, don't necessarily need swamps. Well, they're, they're swampy lizard people. So then I guess they could be closer to the lakes by the Yontium drought? I'm thinking, like... The um, the river uh, east of Yuan Ti. We could change that into a swamp area. So we have our Goliath and Dragonborn conflict. Yeah. Are they like on either side of this desert mountain pass? I would say so. Yeah. All right. So Maybe, we've got um... we've got the halflings 
in the center region. And then I guess we put Dragonborn on the northern side and we can sort of compare them to the other um, reptilian races that live in that area. And then Goliath's on the southern side of the desert. The desert. Okay. Uh, I, I kind of like that. I like an idea of a necropolis. Uh, we should definitely consider that. Um, we are not calling it the Bone Zone. Just, just gonna shut that down right now. The Necropolis. I mean, that's what I had designed for Clear Run, though. Are we including Undead on this map? Are we saying that Undead have their own civilization? Again. Or, or just... just kind of like the, um... Kind of like the World of Warcraft race. Yeah. Hmm. When, when you wake up as an undead, you take a revenant vow. There are plenty of intelligent undead in D and D. That'd be kind of a cool yeah. um power struggle between uh uh corporeal undead and incorporeal undead, uh, vampires and revenants. I mean, revenants only live for one year, though. They only live for a year. Yeah, they have to. They have to take their vengeance within a year, or they lose it. It's, it's they get a year. To, they get a year to take vengeance. Use it or lose it. Can put an undead thing somewhere. I mean, just having sentient undead would be kind of cool. Like skeletons and zombies that know that they are alive. They probably or undead want to live in a colder region so that their bodies don't fall apart. Is the colder region to the north or to the south? Well, there's desert everywhere, so we just have to decide which way is cold. I well, think... The, the far northern island has a lot of whites, so I'm assuming that's ice. Yeah, I put a bunch of snow there when people were like, we want Arakakura Pengu. Oh, you did? Okay. Uh, so... <laughs> So we can make that top bit up there, um, icy stuffs. Yeah, I'm gonna put uh, tundra across all the northern regions. How about the uh, northeastern part be a lot of tundra and ice? Uh, Hilly says that the last human is a lich. Might be kind of cool. Because he would have to survive on souls, because he wouldn't have any other humans to drink the blood of, so he couldn't just be, like, uh, a vampire. I mean, all the lich need is a, needs is a phylactery. Yeah. Whatever you want to say a phylactery is. What a phylactery was originally was the Jews would, like, take these scrolls of scriptures and tie them to their foreheads so that they, they took some line from the Torah very literally and put the word on their head at all times. And just... Cheetah Chaser, that is a brilliant idea. What's he got? The undead could have farms of people. Is this human lich the ruler of the undead also? A council, a worm that walks, a lich, and a pengu. A worm that walks? A worm? What are you... Um... Like a spawn of kiss? I really en enjoy the idea of a worm that walks. I just have no idea how, to impl how I would implement it. Having a uh, a lich and a worm that walks on a council leading a necropolis, I think that'd be pretty freaking awesome. What's the name of the word from Shazam? You mean Shazam? What? The word? So where are we put it? We've we've got like thirteen minutes to figure out this undead situation. How about we have the necropolis be in an area relatively close to the. Uh, the Dwarven and Elf Society. So probably... Where do we put this Elf and Human? Elf, el elf and Dwarvish Society. How about probably. on the northwestern... Uh, northeastern um, continent? Where you see all the, uh, the, the trees... And yeah, there's a bunch of trees around a mountain there. Yeah. How about we have that, like, right there? Huh? So 
So, we put the the undead in the snowy region, or just close to the snowy region, where it's cold enough? I would say close to the snowy If not in the snowy region, then really close to the snowy region. Like, maybe not even a tile away. Or a tile away. You guys, you guys have an opinion of where this undead thing should go? If it's in the snowy region, they might freeze solid. Well, I don't I think don't... that uh, undead creatures really need so much muscular dexterity. I think they're probably moved by just necromantic magic. Necromatic? Necromatic. So I don't know... I think them being cold is uh, the better option to them, like, being out in, in hot, hot sun where the flesh is going to slough off of their body. Yeah, we're not gonna... You're not gonna be having a, uh, a necropolis be the... the empire. Yeah, they want, they want to be in a place where the natural weather of the area is going to preserve their bodies, basically. Which either means being really deep underground, and then we don't uh, have a thing to put on our map, or putting them above ground in somewhere that's really cold. How, what about Tabaxi? Gotta have a have the frost giants up there. Uh, we could do the, uh, the those snow cats as the Tabaxi in that area. Snow cat Tabaxi. I like the twist. I was about to just say, you know, normal Tabaxi. Let's put a jungle in somewhere. Snow cat Tabaxi. No, nope. I, mean, I you just guys deleted. Know what I'm talking about, like the the, the snow cats. Those <laughs> are a thing, right? Dwarf I'm not elf. Just going crazy, right? Shh. We're gonna we're gonna call it the the snow leopard tabaxi for now. Which is what Erin's Erin's monk that she's playing is a snow leopard. Oh, the drunk asshole? Awesome. Yeah, she had originally made it for the yes. Princess of the Apocalypse thing. Yes. Yes, Aether. I love you. Main Coons, Bombcats, Mountain Letters. Stick the Fire Giants. How about we put the Fire Giants in the Tundra? Ho! Hi, Aether. I, I, I read somewhere that Fire Giants tend to live in frosty areas. I don't know why. I, I don't know like where you read area. that. It wasn't in a D and D thing. I kind of want to say it's from either three point five or Pathfinder, but I'm pretty sure that's wrong. I feel like fire giants would have a better time living in snow than frost giants would have living in heat. Make the tundra volcanic. Like an ice over volcano. Hmm. Or even an active volcano that just happens to be in the Arctic region. So then we could have, like, actual, like, fire versus frost giant wars. Hmm. That'd be kind of cool. Let me find some volcanoes. Is anyone else, like, really hyped to play in this uh, <laughs> campaign? I want to play in this campaign. Cheetah Chaser, I can tell you that random, that just doing random campaigns off the cuff are fun and sometimes not so fun. It depends on the DM. For example, me, I like creating a whole world and its lore beforehand because then I know everything that exists and if people ask me questions about it, I can answer them without having to pause to think about it. I don't generally like improvising lore because I always feel like, what if I say something that contradicts something in the world or something I've already said? And I don't generally like playing uh, in campaign settings that other people have created, like any canon Wizards of the Coast. I don't know why I'm running Princes of the Apocalypse right now, but um, I don't like running those because then I feel like I have to go look up, alright, what did they say is the lore of this thing? Who worships so who or that. what and why and how? Unfortunately, we have four minutes left in this event. Gerard the Wizard. Gerard the Bard. He was with us for one session and it was crushed by a gigantic flesh golem. Was he? 
Yeah, he was. No, no, I feel no, like, like I feel what I remember happening was I don't remember if I talked to you or Aaron about this, but I remember your character dying, and then you just ended up playing Gerard. No, no. What happened was um. My dwarven assassin, who went by Gerald, even though that wasn't his actual name, um, he and Gerard were going around behind the giant frost golem, so we could start, so we could start climbing it, and then uh, our ghost friend decided to blow the powder to kill it into its face, and it fell. I made my dexterity check, or, or whatever it was called. Uh, Gerard did not, and was crushed. You made your percentile check, because that's what those things were. Yeah. You made your... Here, you look up in the player's handbook what the odds are for a thief to make this roll. I was an assassin, thank you very much. Different class. That is a yeah, subclass of thief, as far as at and is concerned. We might, Hilly. Uh, we're, we're looking at a bunch of ideas right now. I mean, everyone who is a dungeon master could probably have a different section they could be running. Mm hmm We create we create one of those group West Marches accounts again. <laughs> Alright, but lo looking up at the map that's right above this that I just sent, everyone's cool with that uh, northern area being the way it is. I put a bunch of like dead forest around the two volcanoes over there. Which kind of implies that the volcanoes appeared at some point in an area where there was forest. What if that was just a spontaneous, um... Maybe uh, the humans disappearing coincided with some weird weather occurrences. Who knows? Uh... That's lore stuff. <laughs> Alright, well I have to go. Thank you guys for showing up. This was, uh, this was a fun experience and I'll be sure to put this, uh, edit this video as fast as me possible. It will never happen. I, I, I had a lot of fun. I, I would like I'd like to thank uh, everyone who's still here and paying attention. Uh, the, the two people who left, they're, they're cool, but they left. They don't like us anymore. Right. And Jonah, thanks for hosting this thing. This is amazing. Well, are you being facetious? This feels weird. I'm not being facetious at all. Like, this is awesome. We should do this again sometime. Alright, well, maybe if I... As I was telling Richard, maybe if I get another 3,000 followers, we'll do this again. <laughs> Until... <laughs> Alright, I, I guess I have to stop the recording. For the... For, also, for the... I'll do a short segment that I'm going to put back at the beginning of the video. For those of you watching on YouTube who had no idea that this event was going to happen, I'm sorry. <laughs> but uh, here you are, and here's everyone uh, on Tumblr or YouTube right now who's watching this. Uh, here's this event. It was really fun. And this is also my sign-off. Goodbye. Bye.